it's really hard to see how ugly our way of life is when you're right in the middle of it. Right in the middle, everything's clean and colorful and it's filled with all sorts of nice things that you can buy. To get a real idea of how ugly it really is, you have to go to the ends and see how it eats and see what it shits out. I had the opportunity recently to visit the ass end of the beast that we call Western capitalism. This regional waste management system is a non-profit, municipally run entity, which means that it's far better than the privately owned waste management facilities that exist because their mission statement is what drives them, dedication to the environment and all that, rather than cutting corners to make profits, which is extremely common in this industry. And they have to deal with everything. I mean, they ostensibly do recycling, but they also deal with all the toxic shit that can't be recycled. And they burn it to heat water, which creates steam and turns a turbine, which generates electricity. So, you know, we turn our trash into electricity. I was hoping to find out more about how great recycling was and how progressive my community was. But despite the focus being largely on recycling and diverting waste from the waste stream, the main thing that the folks here talk about is extending the life of landfills. Extend the life of the Asheville. The longevity of our landfills. Landfills and Asheville's are measured by airspace. <clears throat> Once you get to a certain airspace, you have to shut it down. So how long, how many years does it typically take to fill uh, an Asheville? <coughs> 25 or 30. Landfills are not sustainable, and they know this. It's kind of the elephant in the room that it's not a perfect solution. I don't blame the folks who work here. I don't think that they're evil or trying to lie to me or cover something up. They're actually very candid and straightforward about how fucked up things are. They're just trying to do the best that they can with a broken system. This plan of how to deal with our waste is not where the problem lies anyway. The problem lies in the way we live, the way we organize our economy. So we'll start, start here at the back. This is the, the back end of the, end of the process. And so these are what we sell on the open market as the commodities. So you've got steel cans, aluminum, there are our milk jugs over here, number one PET plastic, rigid plastic, which we don't accept in our program, but we get a ton of it, so we bail it and sell it for anywhere from zero to ten dollars a ton. And then this is, uh, we call this our garbage plastic. This is plastics three through seven. And uh, that is, uh, that plus the rigid are exported to China exclusively. The rest of the material uh, stays in the States, um, as well as some of it going to Canada. And we have um, our fiber, which is our cardboard and our newspaper. Some of the newspaper goes to China. Um, some of the cardboard goes to Canada. It kind of depends on where the market is. Steel cans, steel cans can be recycled indefinitely. So, um, Obviously, it'll uh, it takes you know strain off the environment, natural resources, um, less oil to produce it um, once it's gone through recycling. Aluminum, same thing. Aluminum can be uh, recycled forever, um, and that puts less stress on uh, bauxite, uh, which is mined. And there's a big bauxite mine in Jamaica, and they they basically dig down about 20 feet, and once that bauxite is exhausted, they move to the next location. You know, and uh, so that's you know not going to last forever. Same thing with iron ore. I mean, you've all seen strip mines, you know, with the mining and, and, and that sort of thing. Um, milk jugs over here, uh, probably one of our highest uh, price commodities. Probably get about seven hundred dollars a ton for milk jugs. <clears throat> Number one PET plastic, it's probably between four and five hundred dollars a ton. Steel cans, probably around three eighty a ton. Aluminum, I think, uh, was at some point it was around 800 a ton. This stuff is uh, zero to ten dollars a ton, and then the garbage plastic. Um, I'm not sure what he gets for that. Maybe like twenty dollars a ton, thirty dollars a ton. <coughs> the rigid plastics and the and the three through seven plastics, uh, when they go to China, they're made into toys, furniture, you know, any kind of plastic stuff that we then buy back. Number one, PET plastic, that gets turned into new plastic bottles. It also gets turned into fleece. Uh, milk jugs, again, new bottles. Um, they use that to make that plastic lumber, that like Terex stuff, 
and mix sawdust with it. Uh, aluminum cans, it takes about 60 days for once it hits this to get back on the shelf. And that's how quickly they can recycle that into a new can. And um, steel cans, they, they go into making new cans, automobile parts, bikes, you know, pretty much anything. Um, when they recycle the milk jugs into the flooring stuff, yep. uh, is that uh, reclaimable after that, or does that make it pretty much unusable? It's pretty much unusable after, after, that, after yeah. that. Yeah. And that's what, you know, the same thing with the rigid plastic and the three through sevens. Once it's made into, let's say, a toy, mm -hmm. it becomes non recyclable at that point. Mm -hmm. So before the waste energy plant was built, this building was here, and its job was to bale garbage with this baler and send it up to our landfill, which is now capped and closed. So um, the plant went online in 1988, and then 91 they started the recycling here. It's kind of overkill for recycling baling, but we reused it um, because it puts out a big, dense bale. So we store cardboard inside because if it gets wet, it's worthless. And then over here are our number two colored plastic. And you can see on the ground why we store it inside. If it was outside, you know, all of that laundry detergent, oil, what have you, would go into the groundwater. So we keep it inside and, and keep it clean with uh, Speedy Dry. This material here, this is what we would call bypass from the recycling uh, program. And what we do with that is we'll either bale it or we'll just convey it down to the waste energy plant and it becomes... Uh, gets turned into electricity. The whole time that we toured the recycling facility, we looked at all sorts of machines that help to mechanically separate the recyclable out of the non-recyclable. But what kept lingering in my mind is that most of this shit that we think is recyclable isn't. And what gets recycled only gets recycled maybe once, and then it becomes toxic waste. Plus, there's so many products that have been commingled with other products that are unrelated that it's nearly impossible to separate them again into usable products. Juice boxes are a great example of this. They have paper that's wrapped in metal foil, which is wrapped in plastic, and then heat sealed together. That's three completely different products, all combined into an unusable turd. If you're familiar with the concept of entropy, where everything in the universe goes from being ordered and slowly decays into messy disorder, it becomes clear that the stupidity of our product design is rapidly accelerating entropy for every resource on this planet. All of this stuff comes from somewhere. A mine in Jamaica, an oil derrick in the middle of the Gulf, a rainforest in Indonesia, and then we mash it together in such a way that it becomes a piece of potentially toxic waste that can never be used again for anything. In the crane room, we can see the garbage collected from our area in, for just that day. They burn more than what you see here every week. The region this plant serves is, has about a half million people in it, and there's currently 311 million people in the United States, so multiply what you see here by 622. And then because they burn many times over what you see here every week, multiply that by like 5. The vastness of the expanse of refuse before me in this room was so overwhelming, it was like staring into a Grand Canyon. A Grand Canyon of shit. Our society's shit. This is like the colon of our market system. The burner is down a chute that's behind a cement wall, but the heat from the furnace still manages to make its way through, heating up the garbage into a warm, fetid soup, causing a powerful aroma of human refuse stronger than you can imagine. It even creeps up through the sealed glass windows of the crane operator's room. I try to imagine what it would be like to have this job, to be staring into the ass end of capitalism all day. What would you think about our society? probably wouldn't. You'd probably just think about how many hours are left till you get to take your lunch break, and then after that you'd probably just think about how many hours are left on the clock till you get to go home and spend time with your kids and watch your shows on TV. This is the furnace. We get a chance to look at the flame that converts the trash we can't recycle from 
stuff into totally useless toxic sludge. Yay. Ultimately though, this stuff still ends up in a landfill. It's just smaller because, well, when you burn stuff it gets smaller. These landfills can be hundreds of acres and they get filled up in, you know, 30 to 40 years. We can only do that so many times. We're eventually gonna run out of places to put all of this shit. This ash that's filled with cadmium and lead and mercury and all sorts of heavy metals. Now, the tour guide ensured us that at this point it was considered non-toxic, but I think the key word there is considered. It's just legally considered to be non-toxic. Which, of course, legality has very little bearing on science. Now, things don't have to be this way. If we as a society wanted to, we could design things so that they could be taken apart. This kind of all goes back to the comment I made in my last video, Capitalism, in which I talk about how capitalism is not an economic system. Systems are like webs, or they're completed cycles. Capitalism is a straight line. We pull shit out of the earth that's usable, we use it, we ruin it, we burn it, we stick it back in the ground in a completely different chemical form that's completely unusable. Our society is literally eating the entire planet and turning it into toxic shit.